What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV. Following my unboxing and first look at the Android Mini TV and Air Remote, a lot of you were asking for a full review. So now that I've had some more time with it, I really had a chance to test it out, here it is. So do hit that thumbs up button and let's get straight to it. Looking at the setup initially, very, very easy to set up. You've got the cable that goes directly into your HDMI port on your TV. If you want a longer cable, those are also available really cheap as well. And uh, you can either power the device uh, via the mains adapter. However, I've also discovered that if you do have a USB port in your TV, you can simply connect the cable directly into the USB port and it will draw the power from there. The USB ports on the device can be used for a keyboard and mouse. I'm personally using the RC12 wireless remote, so that's got the unit that's connected in here. And you can also use USB for extra storage, so if you've got a USB device or the micro SD card as well. Performance wise, it's a dual core 1.6 GHz Cortex A9 processor with 1 GB of DDR3 RAM running Android Jelly Bean 4.1. So it's a decent spec, not the best out there. In terms of benchmarks, you've got similar performance to something like the Galaxy Nexus or the Galaxy S2 to give you a bit of an idea of the performance. And uh, realistically speaking, that's not too bad because it's really what the device is intended for. And uh, for the price that you're paying as well, it's uh, very, very reasonable. Video playback is what the device is primarily going to be used for and that's the sort of primary use I'd say. 720p and 1080p videos work absolutely great on here. Smooth, no issues. I've tried lots of different file formats, MKV, MP4, AVI and even FLV flash video. That's something that you know is not compatible on a lot of devices but the default players on here do play all of these file formats. You can obviously download a different player and different codecs from the Play Store if needed as well. You've got that option there which is great. YouTube works absolutely great. You can get YouTube on the big screen now very easily through this device. The XBMC player was something a few people were asking about. Yes, it does work on this device. It's not available on the Play Store, so you do have to download it directly from the website. And you can add add-ons such as NaviX, which is very popular. Personally, in my experience, standard definition videos have worked absolutely fine. I have experienced a slight lag sometimes when I'm watching HD videos on here. Now, I'm not sure if that's down to my Wi-Fi connection or the app itself. I mean, if somebody else has used it, if you can advise below, that will be really useful. Another thing to bear in mind also is that the bottom menu bar does remain when you're watching videos via the XBMC player. Now, this disappears when you're using things like YouTube or watching videos directly from the device itself. However, on the XBMC player, that does remain. Apparently, you can get rid of it using some additional apps, etc., which are on the XBMC Frequently Asked Questions website. So if that is quite annoying for you, you can go and check that out there. Web browsing and apps work good on here as well. Speed wise, are pretty decent, no problems whatsoever. You can browse the web pretty easily on here and social media, Facebook, Twitter, if you wanna check your timeline on your TV, again, those options are available. Here is my uh, Twitter timeline. So if you're not following me, do go ahead and, and give me a follow on at SuperSaf. I thought I'd just slip that in. But generally speaking, working pretty well, no issues whatsoever. The RC12 remote, very easy to use. I actually really like it. Keyboard again is fine to use browsing the web but just generally looking through your apps things like that work absolutely fine now one thing to bear in mind is this does not have an accelerometer as your phone will do so games which is the next thing that we're going to be talking about um, it's almost like using a mouse so something simple as angry birds will work fine here but if you're going to be using demanding apps then the rc12 remote is probably not going to be the best because you might be limited in terms of options now this is because Android games are generally made for a touchscreen device and that's what they're optimized for. So using something like the RC12 mouse remote is not gonna be the best experience. However, there are third party apps which you can buy. I think one of them is called Droid Mode, which is gonna let you use your mobile phone or tablet to control the games that you have. Now, I'm personally not much of a gamer myself, so I've not really tried this out, but that might be something worth looking into if you are gonna be gaming on this device. Skype was something that a few people were asking about as well. Now, you can connect a webcam via the USB port, so that's pretty easy to do. Here's a quick test. Now, uh, the webcam I'm using seems to work fine. Quality is not brilliant, but it is useful uh, for Skyping from your couch, say for instance. Now, there may be certain models that are more compatible than the others. But generally speaking, you're just gonna be using the webcam that you've already got. This is the one I've got, the Microsoft webcam, and it seems to work decent. 
beaming content from your phone uh, to your TV through this device is something else a few people were asking about. Um, similar to AirPlay on the Apple TV. Now you can get apps such as iMedia Share. Now there's a free version as well as a premium version which you can buy. And this will allow you to share your content from your phone things like videos, images, directly to your TV so you can beam these out and check them out. Pretty cool and there's other services available as well. It works great and very, very useful too. Overall, I think this is a great little device. I would say it's mainly gonna be used for content consumption, watching videos, maybe a bit of browsing here and there. But for under 100 pounds, I mean, you can't really go wrong. This is a great addition to your TV. And uh, that's the beauty of Android because of the open platform. It allows you to experience Android on your television set, which is absolutely great. If you are a bit more of a gamer, it might be worth waiting around for, I believe it's called the Game Stick. And uh, that's a HDMI Android mini TV with a controller. And also it might be worth looking into a few different controller options using your smartphone as well. What are your views on the device? Um, would you get one? Do you have one? If you do have one, do you have any tips that you could share with us? Do drop me a comment below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, as always, please, please do hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out. And why not subscribe to the channel? Hit the button right here. There's plenty more content coming up on the channel. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.